Good afternoon and thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Superintendent Sally Riley. I'm the Operations Manager for Lancaster, Morecambe and Wire. It's been a week now since Nicola Bully from Inskip in the local area went missing. Her family, particularly her partner, her children, her parents and her sister are in real agony while she remains missing. And I want to pay particular tribute for their patience and dignity and strength at this time. In the last seven days since Nicola went missing, a week ago today, the police have done a number of enquiries to try and find Nicola and to bring her home to her family. In particular, the search has focused on the river bank and the river wire here in St Michael's. An unprecedented number of search resources have been searching the river and the bank. This includes drone, the helicopter, police divers, sonar equipment, pole cameras, underwater drone and staff wading the shallower parts of the river. We've also had search dogs that are specially trained in the area from both the boat and the river bank. And this has included the area where Nicola went missing, but also upstream of where she went missing and the 15 kilometres or so down to the sea. We've been assisted in this by the Coast Guard, by RNLI, by colleagues from other forces and the Lancaster Area Search and Rescue and I want to thank them for their assistance. Unfortunately we have not still found Nicola but our search does continue. As well as the river search we've also undertaken a one kilometre physical search of the open ground in a radius from the point where she last went missing. This has included open ground, empty buildings and their gardens, to no avail so far. As well as search officers, we've had a number of uniformed staff in the area, officers and PCSOs receiving community intelligence and offering that visible presence to the local community to answer any questions and to allay any concerns. At the same time, a dedicated team of investigators who often assist missing people inquiries has been working on this tirelessly. They have undertaken extensive house-to-house -house inquiries. They've checked numerous CCTV, dash cam and uh, ring doorbell footage. They've traced and now spoken to a number of key witnesses they have spoken to people in the community who have information uh, about Nicola's lifestyle, um, her daily walk, walks and so on. All this has built up a really rich picture of data that's allowed us to have a very tight timeline, some details of which we've already released, about Nicola's last whereabouts uh, and what she was doing last Friday morning. I'm just going to take you through some of those. So, at 8.43 last Friday, Nicola was seen on the river path walking towards the Iron Bridge. A few minutes later, at 8.47, she was seen in the lower field with her dog, Willow, and her mobile phone, which was on view. At 8.53, she sent an email to her boss on her phone and at 9.01 she joined a team's work call. All of this was normal behaviour for Nicola. This was not out of the ordinary and nothing different or unusual happened during those calls and emails. 
At 9.10, she was seen in the upper field. The dog was off the lead. Again, this was normal. The dog was not in its harness and the lead wasn't on the dog, which was all part of Nicola's daily routine. At 9.20, through enquiries we've made, we believe that her phone was on the bench. At 9.30, the team's meeting ended, but Nicola's phone remained dialed in. At 9.33, a witness found Nicola's dog, Willow, running between the gate to the field and the bench where the phone was located. Also found by that witness was the dog harness, which was on the grass between the bench and the river's edge. Therefore, the time that we are particularly interested in is between 9.10, the last confirmed sighting, and at 9.20, when Nicola's phone was found on the bench. Sorry, not found on the bench, when Nicola's phone was on the bench, believed to be on the bench, found at around 9.33. The witness made numerous inquiries to try and find the owner of the phone, not knowing who, whose phone it was, and indeed whose dog it was. That led the witness to meet up with other people who did recognise the dog as Nicola's and the school uh, to which uh, Nicola's children go was alerted at 10.50, as was her family. This means that we've only a 10-minute window in which we cannot account for Nicola's movements. The inquiry team has undertaken a number, as I said, of dash cam, CCTV and ring doorbell footages. This has allowed us to eliminate any trace so far of Nicola having left the riverside, which is really important. So we believe that Nicola was in the riverside area and remained in the riverside area. We remain open to any inquiries that might lead us to uh, question that. But at this time, we understand that she was by the river. Our main working hypothesis, therefore, is that Nicola has sadly fallen into the river, that there is no third party or criminal involvement, and that this is not suspicious, but a tragic case of a missing person. This is particularly important because speculation otherwise can be really distressing for the family and for Nicola's children. In terms of what we would like from the public, I would like to thank them, particularly Nicola's friends, neighbours and the community of St Michael's and the wider area who have come out in force to help in the search for Nicola. I do have an update on the clothing that Nicola was last seen wearing and this is something that the public who live in the area or who walk their dogs on the river path near to St Michael's or downstream of St Michael's towards Morecambe Bay can look out for. They are an ankle length black quilted gilet jacket, a black Engelbert Strauss waist length coat which was worn underneath the gilet, tight fitting black jeans, long green walking socks tucked into her jeans, ankle length green next wellies and a necklace and a pale blue Fitbit. It's really important that the public pay heed to those very specific clothing descriptions, please, because factual sightings of those items would be very useful to us. We also appeal for any remaining dash cam footage that may not yet have been submitted to the police in this inquiry, particularly if people have that relating to the Garstang Lane area of St Michael's. Please can the public continue to report only factual information that they have 
and not speculation as to what may have happened to Nicola, because this is a distraction to the police inquiry and not helpful for the family. I would also appeal to the public to keep themselves safe in this inquiry. People going out at night in the darkness could fall into the river and face other hazards. Likewise, if they go out in boats on the river, please only do so if you've got experience in doing that. We don't want people to be in danger. Lastly, I'd like to underline the support given to the family. It is, uh, as I've said, an agonising time for them. Nicola has two little girls, a partner, sister and parents, as well as many, many friends and uh, neighbours and well-wishers in the local community. We are supporting her family with specially trained officers and staff. And I'd like to thank the wider community for all the support that they've given during this very difficult inquiry. Thank you. I'm happy to take questions if there are any. And can I ask, the, um, is there any data from the, the Fitbit, the, the new Fitbit you can track the location using the phone? Yeah, all the telephony and digital inquiries have been handled by the inquiry team, so all of that data will be looked at. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I know earlier in the week you were searching the river for signs that yeah. she'd fallen in. Did you find anything? Is there anything to support that hypothesis? No, not so far, unfortunately not. That's why I particularly appeal around any clothing that may be matching the description I've given and that could be found, but nothing has been found in the river. I should say that the river is tidal below the weir, so if you see um, repeated searches of particular areas of the river, it's not necessarily because we found something of note, it's because the river movement is complex and we are taking advice from uh, academic specialists in water movement around currents and so on. Just one other thing, has she made any contributions on the team's call that she spoke from or was it just on you? Not that I understand, no. And again, this was normal. It was a large team's call. Uh, she was one of many people on the call and I wouldn't have expected to necessarily to participate actively. Thank you. Through telephony inquiries that we've done relative to the phone itself rather than through a witness. No. Hi. Hi. Not that I'm aware of today. Clearly, the public are, are, are very well intentioned and have given us a lot of information, quite rightly. They don't know whether it is of particular use or not, and obviously we can judge that, can't we? But um, so far, it's taken a lot of effort and diligence to go through all the information that's been provided, and, and we'll continue to do that right through the weekend and into next week. Hello. Um, Can you tell us a bit about how many calls or pieces of information you have from members of the public who and got any idea about the number? I can't give you a number, but I know there have been a lot of calls today. Clearly, seven days on is a really good time for people to think back particularly if they have perhaps a particular work pattern where maybe they may, might be working on a Friday or not working on a Friday. It's again Friday today, and that will probably take them back to what they were doing last Friday. Were they driving through St Michael's at around 9.15? Were they dropping children off? Were they going off to work? What were they doing last Friday that they might always do? That, that would be helpful for us to know if it's relevant to the inquiry. Hello. Can you just explain to me why you're so sure she didn't leave the Riverside? Are there no kind of cross-country routes, no other ways out at all that could have been taken? Yes, yeah, several of the exits from the Riverside area are either locked or they're covered by CCTV. So we've been able to look at that CCTV, negate Nicola leaving the local area. The areas that are not covered by CCTV is where we've been particularly interested in dash cam footage. So that's Garstang Lane leading to the A586. If we can definitively cover off that 10 minute window in particular and the few minutes either side, then we will know definitively that she has not left the area because of the lack of 
footage or footage showing that she didn't pass by. But we are as sure as we can be that Nicola did not leave the area. There's nowhere that there were cars parked where she could have been in a car, for example, No. Like no. That. No. All the, all the exits to the area that she was, as I say, are either locked, covered by CCTV, or Garstang Lane, uh, we're appealing for dash cam footage to cover that gap. At the point where uh, the bench is located, there is quite a steep drop to the, albeit not high, it is steep. Um, and therefore, uh, whilst I don't want to speculate as to what may have happened, um, it is our working hypothesis that she's entered the water accidentally. Um, and, um, and, and that's why there is no further physical evidence on the field. Can she swim? She can swim, yes. How deep is it? It's different depths, actually, which is why we've had some staff wading the river and some staff uh, underwater search. But as I say, the sheer number, actually an unprecedented amount of technical equipment with the sonars, the pole cameras, the dogs, uh, the surface searches, um, the underwater search, it is really so very thorough um, that, that we have discounted uh, finding anything in that immediate area under, underwater. Are there any other factors um, with, with Nicola that may have contributed to the situation? So, uh, what, what, was she ill or was she taking any medication or any underlying conditions? We're not considering, we've clearly considered um, the whole picture, but that is not relevant at this time, no, not at all. Can you check the sort of the windows between 9 and 10 when she was last seen? Correct. So Nicola was last seen by a witness at 9.10 and the phone was back on the bench at 9.20 or thereabouts, yes. Yeah. All, all, all of the timeline details, what the police have been doing every day, uh, what we're intending to do over the next few days is all relayed to the family so that they're kept updated and are aware, yeah. The dog was off the lead. This was normal for the dog to run about, and Nicola was on a team's call, which again it would be normal for her not necessarily to participate in actively and just to have the phone to listen in effectively. But you, know, I have, I mean, you do, you do, but anything could have happened with the dog whereby uh, Nicola may have gone, and I don't wish to um, speculate in that we don't know, but it is possible as the dog was loose and off the lead that there may have been an issue with the dog that led her to go near to the water's edge. She puts the phone down to go and deal with the dog momentarily and, and Nicola may have fallen in. So that is a possibility. The dog was dry? The dog was dry, yes. Hello. Sorry, that was my last question. The dog was off his hands. Yes. It seems normal. Yes. Was there any chance the dog was we don't believe the dog was in the river because the dog right. we believe was dry and the witnesses who uh, who were part of the timeline that I've laid out have not described the dog for example swimming in the river or jumping into the river so we assume the dog didn't get into the river but we don't know why Nicola may have entered the water if she did and how long will the, will the sort of missing person inquiry be um, the scale it is in terms of search operations? Well, clearly, um, a 15 kilometre <coughs> stretch of river is, is long, and therefore, um, you know, our, our partners continue to assist us in that. So, um, there are lots of things that we'll be doing over the weekend in terms of um, water, surface, and riverbank searching, um, and our partners will be working with us into next week, but it's too, di too early to say at this stage how long it will be. I'm going to take one more question, if I may, from someone who hasn't yet answered, uh, asked a question. Thank you. This is a large rural area with a long stretch of river. All I can say is that we are doing absolutely everything possible. We are working tirelessly, long hours with a very large team of both um, plainclothes and specialist uniformed officers to try and do everything we can to bring Nicola home uh, to her family. But it is um, a very complex and challenging situation and we hope for a, a good outcome. The possibilities, as the way you said it, seem quite limited, small. Well, as each day goes on, we become very much more concerned for Nicola's safety. 
but uh, we have the best minds and the best trained officers available to us, as well as a number of very specialist partners. So every potential um, possible way of improving our chances of finding Nicola are being exploited. Thank you. Okay.